Dude, Tyson, what is up, man? Welcome Beyond Homo Sapien Podcast. And to anyone watching, welcome back to the Beyond Homo Sapien Podcast. This show is all about human evolution and the future of the species. I'm here with Tyson James Lee, and we are going to talk about the topic of self-love. And uh, Tyson, before we get into talking about self-love and loving yourself and the importance of that, um, can you just tell us a little bit about your story? I know that you've got a really powerful story, especially related to this topic. And I think that I want to hear it. And I think the people want to hear that story. So if you could just share, share your superhero origin story uh, with us for a minute. And, uh, and then we'll dive into this topic, man. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, it's been a, uh, been a journey. The story will um, definitely give some insights on how it is about the journey and not the destination. Um, and that was a pretty rude awakening, but it was very valuable in, uh, in the aspects of learning to love myself. So um, I grew up in Washington State. Um, I grew up lower income family, um, grew up Christian, uh, fundamental Christian, um, went to a Christian school all the way up until eighth grade. Um, I grew up with men doing Bible studies in my house and, you know, was very educated on that and um, really had a big love for Jesus. And, uh, you know, um, as a young man and wanted to be very purposeful and passionate as I went on and carried out my mission um, for God or for Jesus. And so um, got into a lot of trouble in my early 20s, um, prison, heroin addiction, uh, illegal operation, lots of, uh, you know, toxic relationships, um, very much looking for my place. And um, when I got out of prison about 10 years ago, um, I really decided to change my life, got really into health and fitness, and just knew that there was something better. Uh, and in April of 2014, I was doing an MLM company. And so I had about five or $600 worth of income a week. And it was enough for me to want to get out. And so I took $600 in a backpack from Washington state, um, bought airfare to San Diego, didn't know a single person, didn't know anybody, but knew that my life was, there was something bigger for me. And so I slept on the beach for a couple of weeks, got a job training in the gym. The guy who owned the gym was super cool. Actually let me sleep in the gym office until I could save enough money to get to rent a room, you know, real rags for riches story and just started meeting people and connecting. Um, and, um, found, um, a gig. I got offered an opportunity with Russ Rafino who runs clients on demand, um, awesome. and, and built his sales team. Um, and, um, started to learn that I was very, very good at high ticket sales and started to generate more money than I ever had before and built a team for Russ and built a team for a company called social empire. And I was living out in San Diego and then a woman named Marcy Locke uh, gets a hold of me. Who's a millionaire coach. And she basically hits me up and was like, Hey, I've got a $15,000 mastermind that I can't find anybody else to sell. And I'm like, well, it's a $15,000 90 day mastermind. And so she's like, I heard you were the best. I'd love to give you an opportunity to sell it. So started to sell it for her, started to have success there. She hired me to run the whole back end of her business, to manage her team, do everything like that. Marcy and I ended up getting into a relationship for a year. Um, and so I had this chance as this you know, young kind of up and coming kid to be in a relationship with a woman who is generating um, a quarter million dollars a month coaching, charging a million dollars per year per client, like doing it at the highest level. And I got to see how she lived her life. And I got to see how she coached her clients and running that whole back end of the business. And it was really the greatest education that I'd ever gotten. Nothing but love for Marcy. And that's kind of how I got my start in the coaching industry. And so I wanted um, more income and I wanted to do it on my own. And so all of a sudden I decided to launch a company called TyFit. And I literally enrolled 12 people um, the day that I thought that, hey, I'm going to do this, I enrolled 12 people at $2,500 for a group coaching program, made $25,000, was super stoked, had no program, nothing like this. And I built day one of the program the day before it started. And I built day two while they were on day one, day three while they were on day two, right? They say, build it and they will come, bring them and then I'll build it. <laughs> and so I started to build this coaching company and, um, you know, that was um, awesome. 
and um, basically went on and did about a quarter million dollars a year for four years organically off just Facebook. And this is before a lot of people were doing videos and really just did the whole health consulting thing. Um, I about, you know, so four years after that, I had had more money in the bank account than I never had before. Um, I was in phenomenal shape and I was in a relationship with a woman I could see myself being with for the rest of my life. And basically all of these things that I told myself, I would find love and happiness for myself at this point. I was there and I remember being so angry, Paul, and so frustrated. And I was like, what the hell have I been sold? Right? Like this whole pursuit, this last four or five years, pursuing the body, pursuing the car, pursuing the finances, pursuing the lifestyle, pursuing all of this. I thought at this point it would create some happiness yeah. and it was getting to the end of the rainbow and looking in the pot of gold. And instead of a pot of gold, there's a leprechaun flipping you off, pointing to another rainbow. Like, no, it doesn't end like over here. And I was expecting like a lot of us are probably that get sold this. I was expecting this, this magic to happen, like this weight to be gone inside of me, um, this, this wanting to stop, this desiring to stop. I was looking for this level of contentment and I was pissed off. And so right then and there was when I made the shift to my spiritual awakening. And I really realized I'm like, all of the stuff that I thought would create happiness doesn't actually create happiness. So my mother was diagnosed with cancer. I ended up going bankrupt. Um, you know, investing in her holistic treatment. And I basically decided, you know what, I'm going to, if, if I'm going to learn to love myself, I'm going to do it against all odds. I'm going to put the business down. I'm going to stop working out. I'm going to shuck everything that I have come to seeing as my own identity. I'm going to move back in with my father. I'm going to sit in silence. I'm going to put myself in the situation where I told myself I was most miserable and I'll be damned if I don't find self-love, then I'm not going to go out and build another company. I'm not going to go out and create this because even when I was a little boy, all I ever said is, well, what do you want? Well, I want fulfillment. I just want to stop wanting. I want to be content, right? And I had convinced myself that I would love myself when I operated in a specific manner. Little did I know that the way to loving yourself is through true self-acceptance um, and self-recognition and self-forgiveness. And it's not about actually changing your behavior. Changing your behavior will help and that will allow you to be more in integrity, which will allow you to feel more alive. Keeping integrity is a way that we create aliveness inside of ourselves. Um, but it's not going to create more self-love. And in the industry and, and, and in our coaching world, you hear all kinds of people saying, well, when you do this, you'll love yourself. Or if you love yourself, right, then you'll act this way. Or you'll treat yourself like this if you love yourself. And it's it, it, what I found for me, what worked was completely different than what I had been sold. I love that, man. Thank you so much for sharing that story. You've, got, you've had a powerful initiation into these things um and yeah marcy Locke's amazing i've followed her for a while she's fantastic um so that's a, that's a powerful uh training that you had that's yeah. a really powerful teacher um and it sounds like you've applied those lessons well and it also you you uh left that whole relationship with love and gratitude and you know that's an important part of it too and i think that what you're getting at too is that if you truly love yourself if you really do resonate with that and approve and accept of yourself at a really deep level then you can't have anything except gratitude for your journey and the people in your journey even if those people yeah. hurt you because they're a part of who you are now. Like you wouldn't be the person that you are today if not for those people in the past who wronged you or who did something to you. They set you on the course that led you here to where you are now doing things that you love. And if you really do love and accept yourself now and forgive yourself at a really deep level, which is really powerful, um, you know, then, then yeah, you just, you just kind of feel that, you know, and you just got to really understand that like everything that has ever happened to us put us in this position every mistake everything that ever happened is just to get us to where we are now absolutely but that's a hard message for people to receive a lot of times especially if they've been through real trauma they've been through real shit and a lot of people have um but even then loving yourself and accepting your journey 
is such a crucial part of the whole deal, especially when it comes to forgiveness. Um, it is. And really a lot of people want to intellectualize forgiveness and self-love and self-acceptance. And it's not something that we intellectualize. It's actually something that we feel and we tap into the body for. And, you know, an, an emotion is, is energy in motion. A feeling is something we lodge in the body. A feeling is something that is not expressed. An emotion is energy in motion. It's something that gets to be expressed. And we can go into that and how it, it, it is relevant. But what, you know, so many people are this way, that way. It, Self-love is so much easier than you would think. And I know that you've been trying your whole life to figure out how to make it work. It comes down to one thing, and that's a willingness to do so. So it's like, man, you know, like, am I willing to love myself for not loving myself? Am I willing to love myself for making that mistake? Am I willing to love myself for being angry at myself for making that mistake? You see, we get, we get these ideas about what emotions are right and what, what are wrong. And so we, we've got this really funky relationship as a society with anger and sadness, right? And when we allow ourselves to love ourselves for feeling those feelings and we actually express them through the body, right? And we feel them in the body, then they move through us remarkably fast. When we suppress that feeling, um, you know, that kind of lodges and creates dysfunction in the body. And so learning to love yourself comes down to one thing, and that is a willingness to do so. And anybody watching this, if you just sit, sit with yourself, you start to follow your breath, and you ask yourself, am I willing to love myself for this mistake? Am I willing to love myself for this failed relationship? And you go as deep as you want. And once you get an authentic, willing yes, you will feel it in your body. You will feel the expansion and the love start to come in. And like people get this idea, again, when we intellectualize, love is an actual feeling. Like love is something that you can feel. It's almost like full body orgasm tingling all over. It's, you know, it, it's, 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 it's immensely pleasurable when you actually feel love being expressed through your body. Man, you're, that's powerful information, powerful way to express that. Um, you're totally right. Your heart is a, there's a resonance field in there. It's an energy field inside of yourself that you can only really experience it can only really be tapped into there aren't words for it because it is the highest joy vibration it's the love is the most powerful force in the universe and that's i know that that's something that gets thrown around a lot by just you know in wordplay but if you read a book called power verse force which maybe you've heard of before it's a mm -hmm. long story short it's a complicated book but long story short it's a chronology of a ton of different research that people have done into this idea of vibration and this idea that different emotions can be felt physically and different ones are you know have a lesser physical effect and that your body can tap into that and it can feel that at a deep level to the point where even if a piece of food is unhealthy for you something inside of your body will be turned away to that whereas if it's something that your body needs your body will be kind of drawn into it and the big ass complicated book that i'm still honestly working through i haven't finished it but um the long and short of it is that love is the most powerful of these energetic vibrations on a frequency yes. on a frequency scale so i mean it's something you can express kind of using our hippie language of like oh it's all about love man uh but then also if you turn to the science they're saying the same thing uh, and uh, and if you turn to the spiritual teachers if you turn to the esoteric mystery schools they're saying the same thing yep yeah hawkins is amazing power versus force is actually where my journey started yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, power versus force is a remarkable book. And it really go it goes in and kind of talks about how powerful love is. And they use the example of the British Empire and how Mahatma Gandhi was able to influence and lead, you know, the most powerful army in the world coming down. And it's yeah, it's fascinating. Um, there is nothing more powerful than love. And again, you it's not something you intellectualize yourself we will convince ourselves in a million different ways how we get to love ourselves or what that looks like and you putting judgments on what love looks like to yourself is actually counterproductive and it's going to it's not going to allow you to receive the abundance of love that you actually have access to and we can get into this in a million different ways but 
you have all these people too seeking for love outside of themselves when the truth is energetically is we cannot act we are not set up to receive more love from another individual than we can give to ourselves. And so I used to go around from relationship to relationship from relationship thinking, well, why won't these women love me the way that I want to be loved, right? And as soon as I learned to love myself at a deeper level, women showed up that were giving me that same amount of love. And so it is critical to understand that the way that you get the love that you desire from others is by first giving it to yourself. We have what is called an upper limit problem, which is a thermostat. Each of us have a thermostat and it's a subconscious thermostat on the amount of love, joy, and abundance that we can tolerate before we sabotage it. So growing up right in our childhood and through all of this, we become conditioned and we become programmed that life is a certain amount of good. And when we we get above that good, that's when the subconscious upper limits, whether it's worrying about shit that's irrelevant, whether it's, um, you know, spending a large amount of money on something you don't really need or not being, you know, wh whatever it may be, we all have this. And so I've made a great living on helping people increase their capacity. So if you have four areas of life, let's just, and we're not going to use 25 because it's a percentage. So we'll use 20. Let's say your capacity is 80 and your health is 20, your wealth is 20, your relationships are 20, and your spirituality is 20. And all of a sudden, you run a big campaign and your health or your finances goes from 20 to 40. Well, if you do not increase your capacity, the amount of good that you can tolerate in your life, what's going to happen is those are going to come from somewhere inside the pot. So yeah, your, your finances may be 40 now, but your relationships and your spirituality just went from a 20 to a 10. What we need to do is increase our capacity to receive good love and abundance by doing simple exercises, which we can go over on this call. And once that capacity to receive love has increased, then we get from new numbers. So instead of having 80 to deal with, now you increase your capacity to 120, and now you can have 40 in your finances and 40 with your relationship without taking away from the others. I hope that makes sense. Tyson, that makes perfect sense. I would love to learn some of these exercises. Can we get into sharing some of that? I think that that would be really great. Yeah, yeah. So um, the first one is to just be very self-aware. And so it, this may be a little, sound a little funny if you guys haven't tried it, but you'll get better with practice. So if we look at our judgments define our reality. Our belief systems define our reality. So how do we make new associations and new beliefs? Well, a lot like children. So if you look at children, they grow more spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally than any other individual. Well, what, what is one of the key attributes of a young child? Curiosity and wonder. They're genuinely curious, curious and enthusiastic and wonder they create a lot of wonderment about what the world possibly looks like and this is when they create their framework for their capacity well when we become 18 19 20 years old we get very ego driven and we think we have it all figured out and the idea that we think we have it figured out actually creates the life that we have so all of us are pretty much in the position that we subconsciously believe we should be in well, how do we get out of that? We wonder into it. And so basically, very common upper limits. So one of them is just a worry thought. So let's say your relationship is going good, everything is going good with business, and all of a sudden you're driving home, and all of a sudden you start to worry about a problem that isn't that relevant. The worrying is actually a common upper limit that brings your thermostat of enjoyment down in life. And then we start to interlock and worry on that. What you would want to do is you would want to tap in with your breath and you would want to scan your body, right? To understand what core emotion that you're feeling, right? So we start to breathe and tap into the body. Sadness can be behind the eyes sometimes and in the throat. Fear can be in the belly. Um, anger can be in the neck and the chest. Um, there's all, you know, feeling unsupported could be in your low back. But we basically tap in and we try to feel the body sensation. Then when we feel the body sensation, we want to express that with sound and movement, not intellectualizing it, right? So whether it's some sadness and you're like, hmm, that's interesting. And then you would express, you would 
match that feeling with a vibratory tone, whether it's uh, mm, uh, and then you would sway and move your body in whatever way it just felt like moving, whether you feel like stretching or moving back. And this is why a lot of people start their, their days with dance. So self-awareness about worry thoughts, tapping in to the body when those are expressed, breathing through them and asking, and then you ask a wonder question, what is it I'm actually worried about? Right, because what I'm giving my, my attention to, what I'm giving my focus to is not that relevant. Then when you realize the root of the problem, it comes as simple as a question. Am I willing to love myself for this experience? So we have that. Then the, to take it a step further on polarization, then would be knowledge of self. And what they call knowledge of self, you know, given to the law of one, is that we are an, ex, we are an additional experience of our creator. We are all one and the same. And when we see ourselves as that, there is no longer anything to fear. There is no longer anything to worry about. We understand that, oh, hey, this is just a way that God gets to understand himself. And then that knowledge of self coming to that place where, hmm, this is okay. This is just another experience. It'll turn adversity. And I know that there's a lot there, but really it comes to a willingness. Anytime, I'm going to actually give you this because this is a great way to put it. So I'm going to give you a metaphor. Let's say you're in a polygamous family and you got a hundred kids, or let's just say, you know, whatever it is, you have a hundred kids and each one of these kids represents a piece of yourself. So there's Tyson, the good friend, there's Tyson, the lover, there's, but there's also Tyson, the hypocrite, Tyson, the narcissist, Tyson, the liar, right? We've all got these parts of ourselves. We will hide them away forever and, 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 and make like, no, we actually don't have those issues or whatever. Well, you know how I know that I have it? Well, somebody called me a hypocrite once and it triggered the fuck out of me. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, what, what else is there to look at? So we have 50 of the kids that we love to run up in the house. We're, we love spending time with them. We show them off to the neighbors. We show them off to the friends. And we, we love those 50 kids. The other 50 kids we're not very fond of. And so we lock them in the basement. And anytime they try to come up in the house, we're like, get back downstairs, you little fucker. Go back down, right? Like, get back in the basement. And they're not given any love. They're not given any acceptance. And these children grow up to be criminals, rapists, murderers, um, convicts, whatever, you know, degenerates, because of the lack of love. Each one of us has parts of ourselves that we've locked in the basement. And the key to self-love is making amends and coming to terms with some of those darker parts, giving those darker parts love. So if we start to bring the children up in the basement and start to love on them, start to accept them, then they become the good kids that we want to show off to the neighbors. So how this relates to loving yourself is, no, no, when you lose 30 pounds, you're not going to love yourself more. When you love yourself for being 30 pounds overweight, that love will transform that attribute and that behavior into something that's more supportive. You cannot fix your way to loving yourself. There is that, that whole idea needs to stop because it's really slowing the process down for a lot of people. Acceptance and love loving yourself. So hopefully that metaphor kind of works. And one of the things that I do is I'll have conversations with myself. So yeah, Tyson. So yeah, there is a narcissist in you. Huh? I understand, you know, that, yeah, you, you, you've had a desire for recognition and, and want to talk about some of the good things that you are. And it comes off like a narcissist. And yeah, you've probably been a narcissist before. So how can I make amends with you? How can I work with this part of me to create a more desired outcome? How can I love on you in a way that actually supports me in this aspect and i'll have conversations with myself and greet these areas of myself with love and acceptance and once that process is started paul that's it it's just a matter of time before it does you don't have to intellectualize this stuff you don't have to get all in your head and think oh there's this big process and all this it's a willingness that's it 
It's a willingness. And then understanding how to tap into your body and express and transmute emotion through sound and movement through the body. Thank you for breaking that all down and for sharing that exercise. That felt really good. I was doing it with you. Um, nice. That was great, man. Yeah. Um, you're spot on and you're saying a lot of things that have been coming to me in a variety of different forms for the past year or so um, mm -hmm. and still being integrated at a deep level. But the more that I tap into what you're saying, the more that you tap into the emotions that are within you, especially in your, in your heart, and then you kind of let that radiate out all the way into the rest of your body and you feel that at a deep level, that is when the magic starts to happen in your life in a big way. Um, yep. because you're, you're feeling it. You've got, it's almost like, you know, we're, we're walking batteries. Humans are walking back batteries that emit a frequency at all times. And that vibratory pulse is what is what kind of manifests and emanates your world. And your world is just a reflection of that internal state to you at all times. So there's something that's going wrong in your physical reality or with your body or with something like that. It has something to do with whatever is being projected out of you at all times, like a little beacon, like a little sonar. And um, there's something wrong with that because maybe it's just not pulsating at a high enough frequency or a high enough uh, vibratory state. It's not, mo it's not vibrating fast enough and it's not projecting enough energy so that you are living in a state of being affected and impacted by your environment. And the way to reverse that is what you were talking about, this idea of transmuting energy and changing energy from one pole to the next and understanding that love and hate exists on the same pole. So if you don't love yourself, if that's the emotion you're feeling, you're existing on the polarity of hate, of self-hate. And that manifests, at least it did in my life, as self-sabotage because secretly I didn't think that I deserved it, whatever it was I was going for. Yeah. And if it was a workout routine, for example, because I wanted to get in better shape, I, it was be, be, I couldn't stay consistent, but that wasn't because I, was, I lacked discipline. It was because I didn't love myself enough to commit to a workout program. And then as soon as I did, I got in way better shape. And, but it took me loving myself enough to say, why am I slacking on working out every day? I love myself and I'm going to take good care of myself and it's important. And, you know, Absolutely. but it's, a, but it starts with an emotion and shifting that emotion and realizing yeah, that that emotion is, is manifesting and em emanating out your world, basically. Yeah. I feel like it's important to bring up, like when it comes to manifestation, need and desire are two things that are actually counterproductive, right? So we think, oh, if we focus on this and we want and we desire it, well, no, what you're telling yourself is that you will not be happy until you get this a lot of times. So like if let's say you're trying to lose 30 pounds, a good, great way to do it is so what, what do you think of two things? One, you, what you focus on expands and, and, and the second one is actually feeling the way that what you want will allow you to feel. So instead of saying, when I say, Hey, I'm trying to lose 30 pounds, you think of somebody who's 30 pounds overweight. Well, what if I said, Hey Paul, every day I'm moving to, to better and better health every day. I'm getting more and more fit right? Totally different imagery in the head, right? So most people focus on what they're moving away from instead of focus on what they're moving towards. So we want to actually focus our mind's eye on what we're moving towards, not what we're moving away, because what we focus on expands. So, so many people are focused on losing weight instead of achieving perfect health. So achieve perfect health. That would be um, the one thing that was coming up. And then the next thing is like, we tell ourselves these stories, oh, we're not going to be happy until we're down 30 pounds. We're not going to be happy until we're in this place financially. Think of what losing that weight or being in the financial position you desire would feel like, and then embody that feeling as if it's already happened. Then, then it will start to show up in your life um, a lot more consistently. That is powerful information. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a strong reminder for me because that's something I'm working on right now when it comes to finances is yep. increasing my financial upper limits, my, my threshold there. So I can ask you that question because I feel like that is probably a question a lot of people have on their minds listening to this sort of information is let's say that you are trying to create more money in your world 
um, what's the best way you found to do that? Because you're someone who has generated a lot and you're someone who has a deep understanding of this. If you are someone who says, I have goals, those goals will require me to make more money to achieve them because they might involve, you know, big things. <laughs> and uh, and uh, how do you go about increasing that upper limit to kind of allow that in? What's been the best way you found? That's a great question. Um, so there, it, that could be answered a lot of different ways. Um, and I can talk about, um, for me personally, there's inner work and then there's theory, right? So I have money affirmations that I listen to um, consistently, a lot of times in my sleep that convince me that money is as easy as breathing air, that, um, you know, money is flowing into my life um, on an, a consistent basis. People see the value that I deliver and have no issue paying me. And so that's been great. Um, and I did generate quite a bit of money for other people and did it organically. Um, for me personally, our finances has a lot to do with the masculine. And for me, as crazy as this sounds, it was coming to terms and repairing my relationship with my father that actually allowed me, um, you know, more financial abundance. And I couldn't figure out why I would make a lot of money and then spend it and wouldn't be able to sustain it until I became aware of my relationship with my father and the unresolved traumas and things like that that were happening and the toxic masculinity that was showing, um, showing up in my life. And when I came to terms with that and learned um, how to create reconciliation there, um, and, and, and so many people, just so you guys know, it's an inside thing. We think to heal the trauma with our parents, which most of us have, that we actually need our parents there. And that's not always the case. And so then there's also theory. So podcasts have been amazing, right? Speaking your authentic truth, right? So for authentic resonance is key. So many people are like, oh, what, what does the market want? What can I do that's going to, to create income? Instead of just being like, no, this is who I am. This is what I'm inspired to do. And this is what I'm going to do. So also by following my intuition, I only do what I'm inspired to do. And I have reprogrammed a belief that if I operate through inspiration, um, money is 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 secondary and it is it's no longer an issue in my life for somebody that struggled you know most in and watched his parents struggle growing up if you grew up like that like there's a lot of generational shit there's a lot of stuff that gets to be looked at you have deep-seated beliefs that you know um you know around money I, I don't know exactly what your beliefs are i know what some of mine are so how did we shift those? We shifted them through wonderment and new association. So again, back to the wonderment, right? So what else could it mean? Hmm. So yeah, I'm not bringing in the money that I want right now. Well, I don't have the promotion or I don't have the job or I don't have my own business. Stop focusing on what it isn't. I wonder what else this could mean. The universe is typically, if you're not producing the abundance that you want, the universe is typically sending you a message that's not being transmitted or received. And there's a great, there's a great simple phrase that I like in coaching, learn or fucking repeat. So if you're not open and wondering, you're not going to be able, so there's an openness to learning scale that Hendrix has. And it's fascinating. Whenever I'm in the plus 10, I'm, I'm learning and creating new associations and wondering. And then when I'm closed off and most people are not closed, um, you know, open to learning new. And so that way their financial situation repeats. Man, thank you so much for sharing that. That really resonated with me. So I'll just be totally authentic and transparent with what I've been dealing with the last like couple of months is um, I've been working on writing a book. And this was a message I got when I was in California uh, was that I always, that I need to write a book. Cause I've always been wanting to write a book. I've been trying to finish a book since I was a kid. And, um, this was awesome. a message I got back in like October was like, write this, write this goddamn book that is coming to you. That the book about basically everything I've been learning and shit like that. And probably write many books and become an author and, you know, do that. And, and the message was like, that's what you're missing is like, you got to do that because that's your true life's calling. And that's why you're not making more money or achieving more success in the material world is because you're not on the path of writing your book. And um, that was, I was, it was a, with a mushroom spirit. 
and the mushroom trip was all you know about this topic and kind of like hey uh you know it's ba- was basically saying like we as the spirits or we as the universe or whoever your job in our eyes is to write that book and become an author so we're gonna we pay you for that that you know and it might show up in a million different ways it might show up as someone giving you money or hiring you for building a website or hiring you for coaching or or whatever selling more on on online or something like that but like the reason that that is showing up for you is because you are invested in the creative process of writing a book because that's what you're supposed to do and ever since that, I've, ever since I do that, ever since then, I've been working on this book and things have been getting a lot better and moving in the right direction. And any time that things are not showing up for me in the way that I might need to pay my bills or do something like that, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I better go write the book for an hour and see what happens. And then always comes through and I'm almost done with this book. So I can't wait to see what happens when I'm actually finished with it. <laughs> energetic frequency and reason for that. Um, so that is what I, so one thing I teach people is how to live inside your zone of genius. And so like you, maybe, you know, or like me, maybe you, your zone of genius is writing. When I'm writing, I'm in my creative genius. That is what I love to do as well. But we have a zone of good. We have a zone of excellence. We have a zone of fair. We have a zone of genius. And the more that we can, it, proven this with quantum physics, the more that we can stay in our zone of genius, right? And that would be where flow state happens, where all of these amazing things, that's where every, and that's where we're, you know, basically we create Einstein time where time becomes relative. And, you know, an hour feels like five minutes inside of that when we're truly doing what we love, focus on your strengths and hire your weaknesses. Like people can do VAs now. It's amazing. One of the reasons that I've done really well for myself is because I very rarely do things I don't enjoy doing. So if you want to make more money, stop doing what you don't enjoy. That's, that's huge. If people just stopped doing what they didn't enjoy, they would make so much more money, Paul. I, that's, that's magical, man. Thanks for sharing that because you know, you're helping me a lot too. And I guarantee you that if you're helping me, that you're helping whoever's listening. And, um, so thank you, man, for sharing this. You're a lot of the stuff that you're talking about is stuff that I've learned, uh, in different language and the way that you're putting it, it's giving a lot of very practical application, which like we've been saying before, that's oftentimes what a lot of these folks are missing is there's a lot of talk these days about spiritual awakening, about self-love and communing with yourself and all this kind of stuff. But very few people who are saying, okay, here's what that looks like in your day-to-day life. It looks like maybe starting a blog or a business or a podcast or writing this book or doing more art or, or meditating more, or, you know, going for more walks with your dog or, you know, whatever, whatever it is you feel called to do and whatever your intuition and your body are telling you to do. And most importantly, your spirit, that voice inside of you that is connected to source, uh, the longer that it takes you to step onto that path, the longer it takes you to really kind of live this truth and experience, experience the gift of, of what comes when you love yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Emotional intelligence goes hand in hand with that. So if any of you guys are wanting to learn to love yourself on a deeper level, um, study emotional intelligence. Um, they have learned that factors like race, degree, background, um, ethnicity, IQ is absolutely unrelated when it comes to success. And they've done a big study um, you know, on EQ and on all the people they studied, a one-point increase correlated into $1,600 more in annual income um, a year. So a 10 point increase, 16 K, you know, um, 32 and you know, 64, it just goes up and up and up. And there's 180 points. I believe it's 160 or 180 points, um, on most typical EQ tests. So if you're not creating the abundance and the desired outcome that you want, it's very, it's very likely that you're being run by your emotions instead of you, you running the show as a conscious individual, you're being dragged around by your emotions. And every single one of us has gotten emotional and made decisions that we weren't very proud of. Increasing your emotional intelligence will allow you to do, you know, to be, to be much more effective as a human being. There is no greater skill or attribute. And a lot of the coaching that I do, 
outside of the spirituality stuff is, is really just on EQ and emotional intelligence and teaching me, people how to become more emotionally and sa- sound, which is there's four parts. There's self-awareness, um, self-management, relate our social awareness and relationship management your ability to be aware of and understand your actual emotional state you're not triggered because your girl went to the movies without you you're triggered because your parents used to go to the movies and leave you with a shitty babysitter and now you've got trauma around that and actually has nothing you know being aware of why you feel the way that you are and then being able to express those emotions healthily and also understand and be empathetic to what other people are it will improve your relationships it will improve your relationship with self it will improve your communication with self and then you will start to make some real substantial progress in life when you raise your eq yes and uh, it's a lot of times challenging for people who have been kind of asleep their whole lives to this reality that your emotions are generating and creating your reality and projecting themselves back to you at all times. And that's a lot of times where people get hung up in the beginning is realizing even what emotional intelligence means and bringing that stuff to the surface. And it can be quite challenging. And um, it was certainly for me, but being in therapy was really helpful for me. And I worked with a therapist to do it, to kind of tap into emotional intelligence years ago. And ever since then, it's been life-changing. Absolutely. Like, cause that's how you bring everything up to the surface and then transmute it and acknowledge yeah. it for what it is and be, give thanks and be grateful. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's powerful when that happens, but that's the whole game. You're right. Yeah. Very important. So it, it, all this stuff ties into self-love. And again, like if you guys sit alone and just become consciously willing to just to love yourself a little, that's all it takes. And I'm telling you, it is not rocket science. You can take the information that's been talked about on this podcast and you can go start to love yourself more. And it is a learned behavior. It's something that you have to practice that you will get better at. So now, like when I'm sitting in my shit or when I make a mistake and I go to open up willingness to love myself for that literally within 20 minutes i've moved through it it no longer affects me and i don't even remember why i was so upset or why i was you know beating myself up um and it it, it's absolutely fascinating like in learning to love yourself will change your entire life it will change your entire paradigm your entire results um people have the lives that they are committed to living and we can only get, get as much love as we can give ourselves. And so if you do not have the lives and the results that you want, it can be as simple as learning to love yourself on a deeper level. Thank you for sharing all that, Tyson. That was it's powerful. It's a powerful episode. Um, yeah. and, uh, and the other thing too is just to kind of get into the esoteric background behind this and like kind of the deeper level here is that one of the – it's, it's because we are all one source. We're all one. We're, you're mm-hmm. like you, Tyson, are just me living a different life in a mm-hmm. sense and having a different perspective and a different experience. But we are all one organism experiencing the world through billions and billions of different perspectives. And mm-hmm. when you really understand that, first of all, it unlocks a really deep peace and love for yourself that you can find within that holy grail of insight and connection within that connects you through love to source at all times. Um, But then also loving other people too, because then you understand that whoever you encounter is just another version of you that is just there to teach you a lesson in some way and just there to hold space for you to have some sort of a powerful healing or learning experience. Um, That doesn't mean you need to spend all of your time and energy with someone if it's someone that uh, you don't enjoy being around. But you can have ref- you can have a empathy and understanding for that person, and you can love them and have gratitude for them being in your life, even if it's not a pleasant interaction or a pleasant experience. You can say, "I love that person. That's just me living a different life." And if we have to go our separate ways, that's just because we are not on the same journey, and they're looking for a different experience than what I'm creating in my reality. And, but I love them and I wish them the best. And I'm grateful that they showed up in my life to teach me these lessons. And now I'm going to go and learn a new lesson through joy and ease and love, because that's what I'm creating. And when you kind of really feel that and do that process, that alchemical process internally, 
it really is manifested out into your world more and more and more and more and more the longer you do it it gets stronger yes. and stronger and stronger your aura your energetic aura begins to crystallize more and more and more yep. around the energy and vibration of love to the point where that is all that can be allowed in within at least like a 50 foot radius of you because <laughs> that's yep. about how long you, how far your aura goes is about 50 to 60 feet around you but the more that you focus on it on strengthening it and on really keeping your energy safe and feeling that energy of love inside of yourself, um, the wider, the stronger, the more powerful that energy gets to the point where that's all that's even allowed into your physical experience because it's like you have a force field of love protecting you at all times. So that's, that's kind of the esoteric uh yeah. background on love and all this oh. kind of stuff that i've been learning about i've been learning about this a lot this year from a more you know research uh been reading about this stuff more you know and how this all kind of works from a frequency vibration you know quantum level or however you want to describe it absolutely i feel like it's also relevant for for everybody watching like if you want to find so you're like unsure like oh well i don't know where what parts to love more any judgment or any trigger that you have is due to unresolved guilt and shame. They've proven this with psychology. It goes deep. You're, you're not going to want to admit it. It's, it's a tough truth for people to really, but if you're out there passing judgment, so if you're judging one person or another, you're, you have unresolved guilt and shame on some area of that that you're projecting outside of yourself. All that is is really good feedback for you to learn where to give yourself more love. And so in relationships. Paul, you're in a relationship. I'm in a relationship. Relationships are amazing mirrors and catalysts to understand, you know, where we can use and, and, and implement more love to, to grow at, you know, at a further and a faster rate. Relationships are amazing catalysts. Um, those types of things, your relationship with your family, where you're triggered. If you use your triggers as a compass or navigation system to understand where to give yourself more love, this process will go so much quicker. Man, this is powerful. And so, and I just want to say too, a lot of times when you, when we're talking about self love and we're talking about like loving yourself more and what that actually looks like in your day-to-day -day life, for me personally, it looks a lot like slowing down and tapping more into my energy and being more quiet and still with myself, spending more time in meditation, going for more walks in the forest with my girlfriend, hanging out more with my friends, spending more time going to the river um, or going for a walk to the graveyard here in the city that we love to go to walks to because it's very peaceful. And it's where Laura Ingalls Wilder is buried, uh, who wrote oh, Little wow. House on the Prairie because this is where... I live in the town where she did that work. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the other thing. I live in a town uh, literally down the street from where Laura Ingalls Wilder wrote Little House on the Prairie. And now I'm- Oh, that's so cool. I'm working on my book. So it feels very energetically, you know, strong. But anyway, there's a strong energy of creativity in this, in this town that I live in out here in middle of nowhere fucking Missouri. And I, I love it. But what I'm saying is that's the stuff that how I actually, you know, change my behavior to reflect it's like and it what it's not what i find is not a conscious thing and that's i think what you're really getting at here it's not yeah. a conscious thing it's not like i say okay here's my to-do list today i'm gonna love myself today um and that looks like okay i'm gonna take a bath from this time to this time i'm gonna go for a walk from this time to this time no it's it's when you do that when you have planned out your whole day and you have thought through it and you do have a bunch of things on your schedule, but then you check in with yourself or you get a call from your girlfriend and she's like, Hey, I want to go do something. And you're like, fuck it. I'm going to cancel my plans. Cause I want to do that. Cause I love myself. Yeah. And that sounds like fucking fun. And you're just like, fuck my plans. I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go to the river. Cause that's cause my friend called me out of the blue. Or yeah. I just got an urge to go for a run or go to go for a walk because that'll feel good. And, you know, if that makes me 10 minutes late to my meeting, fuck it. You know, it's cool. Like, they'll understand, you know, <laughs> I'll just tell them I'm running late. And then you do. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm taking a I'm taking a walk, too. Like, that's that's the other thing, too, is when you're connecting with people like like yourself, mm -hmm. like you also draw in people where 
half the time if I do call someone, because maybe I was doing some self-care or I went for a walk or I got lost in conversation with my girlfriend because we love talking and it's fun. And um, sometimes I'm like, oh shit, I'm running late for a meeting. You know, I'll call up, you know, Tyson or whoever the fuck I'm yep. going to podcast with. And I'm like, hey man, I'm running late. Sorry, I, I was on a walk. And they're like, oh, no problem, man. I'm, I was meditating. Like, it's cool. Like, yeah. I get it. You know, <laughs> no worries. Like, I'll, I'll just go smoke another bowl. Like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you're, but what I'm saying is you connect and you align with people who are doing the same thing because you're all on the same wavelength where if you call them, and you're like, hey, man, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, I can't hit that deadline that I told you I would hit because, you know, all my clients, yeah. I connect with all my clients who are on this on this level, too. You know, if I say to them, hey, man, I know I said I get that, you know, website done for you today, but I got to go to the woods. I'm burnt out. I'm going to get it done tomorrow. They're like, no problem, dude. I totally get it. Take care of yourself. All good. You know, like you reflect back people who will respect that and not only respect it, but encourage it and say, yeah, man, yes. go to the woods, take a break. All good. I totally get it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do, you reminded me to half the time. I, if I say that to people, they're like, Oh shit, I was going to go to the woods too. And you just reminded me, <laughs> it, you know, it's yeah. like we hold, we remind each other. That's what you're doing for me here on this call is you're reminding me a lot of stuff, you know, here that I really have, uh, really have trouble doubly doubling down on sometimes so thank you yeah absolutely um yeah it's it's fascinating time in nature that we could go into another podcast on that sometime i mean um there's so much with um the neural networks but yeah i think we've given people a lot of practical information um and also knowledge behind you know loving yourself and really like you're in control um what you are willing or not willing to do like showing up is half the battle and just a willingness to love yourself is is the message i've got to just um you know sink in there i love it man the willingness to love yourself i i love that um that should be a t-shirt yes yes be willing to love yourself i love it um and uh one of the books that changed my life uh very powerfully was uh, you can heal your life by louise hay um, yep. which perhaps you've read. Um, no, I have not. Oh, it's, but I, I'm, I'm familiar powerful. with it. Well, you're, you're speaking, you're speaking her language. You're speaking all the same language, but that was a big one for me. And she goes through a lot on affirmations, but the way she teaches affirmations is she says an affirmation is just meant to trigger in yourself where you're still holding on to pain or guilt or trauma. Because if you're writing down 20 times, I love myself, I love myself, and it's difficult for you or it makes you uncomfortable, you're meant to then tap in and tune into your body and say, okay, where in my body does it feel uncomfortable to write out or speak, I love myself, or I am good enough, or something like that. And then that's where you can start to do the work. And she said, affirmations are meant to just expose the problem. And then you're looking the problem straight in the face, and then you can do the deep work to heal and let that go and forgive Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. You're going to have to excuse me one minute. I've just got to run to the bathroom. So Dude, no worries. No worries. Um, but yeah, for anyone listening to this, uh, I would really recommend Louise Hay and that book. It's something I've talked about a lot on this podcast. Um, and I think I'll do a little, little, uh, little talk about it again. But yeah, it's essentially the idea of really integrating some affirmations that, again, will, will kind of trigger you to then step into your body and say, where am I holding on to guilt or shame around this issue? So a few affirmations that you can integrate or apply or start doing this with, uh, a great one is, is I am willing to change. So, and this is really tied in with what Tyson has been saying around being willing to love yourself. So maybe that is a good couple of affirmations to start with. I'm willing to change and I'm willing to love yourself. What I was just saying while you were gone to whoever, whoever was listening, um, I was doing a little commercial break for Louise Hay and her book nice. and honestly saying that one of the first affirmations that she recommends it to pe for people to start doing this work with is I am willing to change. And yes. for a lot of people, that's it, that it all starts there is saying, I'm willing to change. Because then what you start to do is if that's uncomfortable, if change is difficult, and for most people it is for, you know, it's a... You can then say when you're say when you're speaking or writing that affirmation, where am I holding on to tension around this topic of change? 
Where yeah. was, I, when was I first told that change was hard and that it was scary? What taught me that lesson as a child or as a younger person? And then just start to heal around, around that, around whatever that thing is, find healing and forgiveness around that inside of yourself. And that is going to be everyone's personal journey because obviously you and me don't know the depths of everyone's trauma. Um, yep. And that's, that's for the person to figure out. And that's why meditation and things like that are so powerful. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's so important. Like if you're struggling right now, you're not broken. You're a product of your perceptions and your experiences and the mind works on conditioning. And so many people get in this, this space where we don't think we're lovable or we think we're broken or we think we're more fucked up than other people. And just to give you some insight on how trauma works is your brain is set up to try to protect you from ever experiencing the things that were traumatic for your life. And so your wiring is set up to prevent you to our, you know, to, to avoid change or to not want that. Just to give you a, a very simple example, if you're five years old and you're walking downtown with your parents and all of a sudden somebody walks across a crosswalk and just gets plopped, smashed by a car, it's very traumatic for you right? And you're like, holy crap, right? Very early childhood memory. Let's say you live in the country for the next 30 years, and then you take a job in town, and you're in town, and you're, you know, almost 40 years old, and you're walking down the sidewalk, and all of a sudden, you see somebody walking through the crosswalk, and all of a sudden, you get massive anxiety, and you're like, oh, and you don't know why. Well, that's your brain trying to prevent you from trauma. So if you've experienced trauma, like as much as change, like maybe moving to another place when you're a kid or moving to another school and it was very traumatic and you didn't feel like you fat in. Now, anytime change shows up in your life, your brain and your wiring is going to try to prevent you from, from making that change to protect you from experiencing that trauma again. So when we understand the science and the neuroscience of like, oh man, I'm really not broken. I'm really just conditioned this way. Oh, and this is how I can recondition myself. Like, you know, so many people that have success, it's about reconditioning the mind. And what I've done is I've reprogrammed myself for success and love and abundance, right? And I've reconditioned my mind to think that those things are normal and those things are what show up every day. And for that reason, they do. And so if you're struggling, if you're, if you're in that situation, you're not broken, there's nothing wrong with you. You've been through a lot. You've perceived it a certain way. It's time to recondition the mind. That's absolutely powerful and beautifully spoken. One of my uh, greatest mentors is a guy named Alex Sharfin. And um, he says uh, about entrepreneurs, he says, there's nothing wrong with you and you are not alone. And that's, that's his one of his mantras. And I, I so true. Nothing wrong Very with true. you. You are not alone. Um, so man, I got to wrap this up, but I do want to give yeah. us a chance to just close out. Like, is there anything else that's on your heart to talk about? Um, or is there just anything that you would like to promote or where can people find you? Like any parting words? Parting yeah. So what I'm, what I'm up to right now is I'm actually out in the Coral Pink Sand Dunes in Southern Utah. Um, we're building a healing center um, and medicine space. And so I'm out here for the next two to three months working the land. Um, that's where I feel like I can really create a big impact. I run um, a brand under my name, Tyson James Lee. You can find me on Facebook. Like I've, done personal coaching for the last seven years. Um, another thing I'm very passionate about is I built a brand to help speakers, coaches, consultants, healers, Reiki workers, energy workers, hypnotherapists, the people that are really creating impact in the world, the people that are, but you know, a lot of those people don't understand the marketing or the business side. They don't enjoy the marketing or the business side. They just love living their purpose. They love living their, you know, what they're passionate about and going out and fulfilling this mission. I help those people create a sustainable living, doing what, bringing their gifts to the world, um, writing copy and messaging for, for coaches and consultants and stuff like that. So what I've done is I brought together a bunch of amazing people that are great at what they do, have done that have allowed me to white label their services. So really I'm just a brand that helps these specific people and I write the copy. But so yeah, if you need, if you're, if you're trying to figure out how to get your business off the ground, if you are an energy worker, if you are a hypnotherapist, if you are doing Reiki or whatever it is, and you're really impacting lives and unsure how to get that, we, we, we specialize in helping people bring their, 
that type of a service to the market. And then I am just very passionate about coaching people and have coached people. And that includes a wide variety of things. There is no real curriculum when you're working with somebody on their life and their experiences. And after years of doing it, it's really just, you know, something that you, you, you get very good at walking people through, but you can add me on Facebook, Tyson James Lee. That's where I hang out. That's the social media platform I hang out on the most. Tyson, thank you so much, brother. This has been an amazing episode and it's really touched me and I'm going to be thinking about this one for a while. <laughs> I really appreciate you having me on. Dude, this has been powerful. Much love, brother. We'll talk in, we'll talk soon. All right, brother.